All right, guys, so in this video, I wanted to take a look at a few stadiums, MLB in specific, because they tend to have more attendance issues with the amount of home games, which stadiums have been ruined by low attendance. And what I mean by that, you know, when it comes to stadiums, just imagine your home team averaging 10,000 people a night, 11,000. It has an effect on how the stadium is viewed a lot of times outside of PNC Park. Seems like PNC Park, no matter what, no matter how bad the attendance is, they are always thought of as one of the best parks. But I do have two examples that I think are legitimate. These are underrated ballparks that are hampered by really poor attendance, which leads to extremely low energy, and people tend to rank these ballparks lower on their list when really they're underrated and probably both top 15-ish parks in the MLB. The first one is Lone Depot Park. So, I mean, you could make an argument just looking at the exterior of Lone Depot Park. It is the closest thing to an NFL super stadium we have in the MLB. It's got a very nice window. It's got a slick, white, futuristic looking design with the retractable roof. It's got a very modern, small upper deck. And it has a capacity of 37,000. It is the smallest stadium in the MLB. Technically, you can say, I guess, Progressive Field now is the smallest at 34K. But the only reason that's the case is because of a renovation where they removed seats. But Lone Depot Park, if you guys remember when the roof is open during the World Baseball Classic, it has a really good atmosphere. They've got a pool out in left field. They've got the Clevelander. They've got a new bar. The only real horrible renovation I think they made was removing the fish tank. That was super amazing, really modern. I loved that. But to me, this is a really underrated stadium. I think when it was built, the other mistake they made is the big tubes that hold up the retractable roof. Uh, the way they're situated is you just think with the modern technology, you wouldn't need those big things in between the upper deck. That, that always surprised me. I understand, you know, if you need them for support, but still with the way we can build in modern times, you would think they'd be able to do it without those things. But the best feature, I would say, when it comes to this stadium, just in general, is the window out in left field. It's the same thing a lot of NFL stadiums have. Tons of natural light, even with the retractable roof. Unfortunately, the retractable roof, especially what we're talking about right now going into June, I mean, this thing's going to be closed virtually 100% of the time in June, July, and August. That's just how it is in Miami. They always have, you know, scattered thunderstorms, and they are, always have pretty bad humidity. I do think they did make a conceited effort earlier this year to at least open it a few times, but I mean, I'm get, it's probably only been opened like three or four times, so that's another problem to where Lone Depot Park, as a retractable roof with it open, is a beautiful state-of-the-art stadium with the sun shining down onto the field. The problem is it rarely happens, so not only are you dealing with ridiculously low attendance numbers, which is going to hurt the energy of the ballpark, especially if you're watching on TV. And, and a lot of people do just, you know, take things off of TV based on how good a stadium is. It's going to hurt it significantly. And then, you know, the retractable roof aspect on top of that, it's always closed. Baseball indoors is no fun. It's kind of looked down upon. I did a video where I actually looked at how often... These roofs were open, all the retractable roofs in the MLB, and, and this was like closed 98% of the time. It's brutal. So I do think Lone Depot Park is very underrated. The exterior to me is top 10, maybe top 5 in all of baseball. It's great futuristic look. And really, it's like the only thing we can compare to like a modern big time NFL stadium. Unfortunately, I mean, they've had the attendance be so bad, they've closed off their entire upper deck. I mean, this is a stadium that opened a decade ago, and they're already at the point where they're closing off the upper deck. Something has gone really wrong with that whole process. If you build a brand new billion dollar retractable roof stadium and a decade later you're having to close off the entire upper deck, that's a problem. You know, you can understand it with Tropicana Field because the Trop is 
a really bad stadium. This is not a bad stadium. The only reason people seem to maybe think of it as like, eh, you know, like a mid-tier stadium is because I think the lack of attendance really hurts the atmosphere here. So I think this is a stadium that has been ruined by bad attendance. And then the other one, the obvious answer here, Progressive Field. So Progressive Field, you know, hampered by horrible attendance. The right field upper deck never gets filled. They end up having the big botched renovation with the shipping containers and it's completely ruined the ballpark. So you can say that poor attendance has directly led to a bad failed renovation of Progressive Field. And yes, there were a few good things with the renovations. I'll be honest, I don't like horizontal bullpens. That They did do that in center field. They had vertical bullpens originally. I like that better. I don't like the bullpens taking up a bunch of space. But they did do a, a thing with the bullpens where they stacked them on top of each other, which is fine. The bar they put out, you know, beyond the right field foul pole, that's a really nice bar. It's always busy, but... I mean, the shipping containers completely ruined that stadium, and it's a real shame if you look back on the timeline of Progressive Field, the terrible attendance, 2011-2012, it causes the renovation. They take out all the seats. It used to seat 43K. It brought it all the way down to 34,000. They took out 9,000 seats, which is basically unheard of for any major sports stadium to have a renovation where you reduce the capacity that much. And guess what happens about a few years later in 2016? It's the Cleveland Indians against the Cubs, Game 7 of the World Series, and it could only seat, I think, 37 if you include standing room. The original capacity was 34K, though. Uh, so it's just, it's really sad because, yes, the right field upper deck was very ugly, but when they did sell it out, it looked beautiful. It really did look amazing, and they would have definitely sold it out for those World Series games against the Cubs. So that is a you know renovation that was directly caused by horrible attendance. The Indians and now the Guardians really struggling, bottom five, bottom ten of the league. In terms of the attendance, they have a little bit less of an excuse. I mean, you can say the owner doesn't spend money, but that team normally is at least around 500. They have won. I mean, the AL Central is a horrible division. It has been horrible for like seven straight years now, but they have won their fair share of division titles. And the real sad thing, and, and you can say, well, it was a midweek game. I mean, they didn't even sell out a playoff game. I mean, come on, you know, I know it was, I was midweek, it was during the day, but that is, that's a red flag right there for a team if I've ever seen one, and then they do this thing, and, and now apparently they're taking out more seats with another renovation, so their next renovation, they're taking out more seats in, down the third baseline in the upper deck, and they have to redo the shipping containers because they completely botched it and they're putting in solar panels. So I just think they really don't know what to do with Progressive Field. And it is sad because it was such a great stadium when they had the 450 straight sellouts. You know, the way it looks, it's just so aesthetically pleasing when it is sold out, but it rarely happened. And it got to the point where the, the, the right field upper deck would be used one time a year, and that was opening day, and then it would not get used again. So they were like, what's the point of this? It does look really ugly. It's just a wall of empty seats, and they end up changing it, and I would definitely say that poor attendance has really, really hurt that stadium. Uh, the other one you know you could mention is PNC Park. PNC Park did a really good thing when they put together their stadium because they wanted to show off the view. There was really no incentive to have any crazy outfield seating. So even if they have really bad attendances, which they've had some big games where it's been like 8,000 people, you're really not going to see any giant walls of seating because they don't have enough seats in the outfield to show it because the view is so beautiful. So I really don't think that affects it horribly negative. But PNC Park has had some really, really bad attended games. It is hard to tell, though, especially on TV, because there's such little outfield seating. And then you could say, I guess, you know, this is a shame. The Rangers ballpark in Arlington, Globe Life Park, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this stadium was really ruined by the sun, more so than the attendance, or I guess the sun causing low attendance. Uh, it's impossible to, you know, have an afternoon game in Texas in the summer without a roof. And they realized that the hard way, this was a really nice stadium. It had a lot of great corks. 
The design of it was a little bit dated, like you would not never see a left field upper deck anymore. That just wouldn't happen. But you've got the old retro grandstand in right field. You've got the green batter's eye patch in center field. You've got the offices in center field. Really, really like this stadium, and it is a major downgrade, but... Uh, you know, obviously in terms of fan experience going to their new Globe Life field, it's a huge upgrade, you know, because of the fact that it's retractable roof. It's it's basically closed all the time due to how hot it is in Texas. Uh, it is unfortunate what happened to this. So I would say this indirectly was, was really ruined by the sun, but also because of the sun, it, there was a low attendance during day games and it got to the point with Globe Life Park They either had to try and build a retractable roof onto it, which basically never happens, or just straight up build a new stadium, and they ended up building a new stadium, and this barely got any shelf life. You know, it was only used for like 20 years as an MLB stadium, and now it's just sitting rotting. It's got a beautiful brick exterior. Now it is used for some little XFL football. It's a shame. It's embarrassing. It really is. Uh, but what are you going to do? I mean, I mean, you can't like, what are they supposed to do with Rangers Park in Arlington? You know, it's a, it's a perfectly fine state of the art stadium, but it cannot be used during the summer. So it's in this weird sort of state where I, I guess you use it for different events, but it was never supposed to be multi-purpose in the first place. Like it was never supposed to fit football. So it, it really is an unfortunate situation there with that one. But I would say the two main stadiums that have been hurt significantly by uh, horrible attendance, it is Lone Depot Park and it is Progressive Field. Both of those, I would say just if you look at the stadiums, they're both, I'd say around top 12, top 13 stadiums in baseball. But when you add the bad attendance, people take that into account and they and they just rank them lower because of it. When in reality, it's not the stadium's fault that no one goes to the games. I do think it's definitely had a huge effect on Miami uh, because they just, you know, every game, it's it's really bad there. Um, So either way, guys, that's just my opinion on some stadiums that have been significantly hurt uh, by poor attendance. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.